What's up guys, this is part two. So if you missed part one, what are you doing? Go check it out. It should be linked right here. It's also linked in the description. Let's go. Eris Targaryen was the last of his name to sit on the Iron Throne. What a... Known far and wide as the Mad King. Let's go, his Robert. was a reign of instability and terror. The Seven Kingdoms are well rid of him and his kind. Oh, he may have appeared to be a capable ruler at first, but that was due in no small part to his counselors, led by the hand of the king, Tywin Lannister. Oh, there may have been he was years behind that? of peace and prosperity during Eris's reign. Isn't he but the king Tywin now? It was Tywin who was hand really running the country as Eris spiraled further and further into. Can I please pause this so I don't miss this thought? Yeah. So, guys, it's extremely important. Where we, <coughs> it's extremely important where we're at in this series right now because. They're just said Tyron Lannister is about to become the hand of the king once more. Like, look at history repeating itself. You oh, know? lordy. Like, it's different, but it's not. So, with Joffrey being on the throne and then Tyron Lannister being the hand of the king, I can just see how tyranny is going to and instability and terror could come back to the seven kingdoms. So, this is doing such a crazy job of like making it seem extremely important that the series of events that's going to happen in this episode go in a positive way because if not, it's going to be hell on earth, is basically the picture that I'm getting. Right. And we just got introduced to those dragons. So, is I, it going to be Dan Khaleesi doing this? Like, geez. I, I can't oh, get through geez. like four four sentences without feeling the urge to just be like ah ah, ah. I found so so sorry out. guys like if you guys are rocking with us rock with us if not man i'm so sorry i know we talk a lot it's kind of exciting is, to learn stuff i don't this know this is cool yeah That's we're silly. just too into this right now so it's Kids silly but born were famous for losing their minds it was the price they paid for centuries of keeping the bloodlines pure and Eris yeah, more than happily continued the noble sister fucking tradition of his forefathers <laughs> As the years passed, Eris's behavior became increasingly erratic. He cut himself so often on his Iron Throne, many referred to him as King Scab, though never to his face. <laughs> it was rumored he had developed an obsession with wildfire, and was known to inflict horrific punishments on those he considered enemies, including burning them alive. As his paranoia and bloodlust grew, he had a bitter falling out with Lord Tywin, who had served the crown faithfully for 20 years. At least Tywin was able to leave the job with his life and fortunes intact. Crazy. Subsequent hands of King Aris weren't so fortunate. Then the Targaryens went too far. The crown prince Rhaegar abducted Lyanna Stark, daughter of Rickard Stark, the Lord of Winterfell. She was my betrothed. She was my beloved. Beautiful and spirited woman. And I loved her more than life itself. A whole seven kingdoms could Rhaegar went south right. with Lyanna, hiding her away in dawn. What harm he inflicted on the poor girl the gods only know. Brandon Man. Stark, Lyanna's eldest brother, was outraged. He rode to King's Landing to confront the King and demand his sister's safe return. Instead, Eris had him executed, his father, Rickard Stark, as well. There wasn't much left to discuss after that. Eris feared their loved ones would seek revenge for what he did. He was right to be afraid. Eris wasted no time in calling for the heads of Brandon's younger brother, my friend, Eddard Stark. And my head, too, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry he didn't come looking for it himself. <laughs> I love Robert. Alongside John <laughs> Aaron of the Vale, the man who fostered Ned and I as children, Baratheons, Starks, and Tullys all called their banners. Once our rebellion began, the Mad King's days were numbered. Dude, I kind of wish we would have, I mean, like, <clears throat> I'd have been completely lost, but I wish we could have watched this before the first season. Right, you know, like they mention it so much. And you, you so much, and you it just doesn't know. hit the yeah. same. Like, when she's like, we once fought together on the, on the, you know, we once fought in the battle of so-and-so. I'm like, yeah. dude, okay, I understand. Like, y'all y'all once came together because this crazy mf or been kidnapped a lady, so y'all fought for, like, someone's life together, and it really right. just hits, you know? And that's crazy that that was Ned's sister. So right. this is like insane how close it's not like ancient history. Basically. Right. And it, it yeah. just happened. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing is uh, 
I forgot what I was going to say, but God, it was so profound that I just felt like I had to say it. Oh, yeah. Um, the, my favorite thing is how, even though it's repeating itself in a way, it's telling the story from different, different people's perspectives. Yes. So that way, not only are you getting like the story, you're getting it in a more realistic type of way. So let's go. These are, these are crunk. <laughs> As Ares Targaryen's behavior grew more and more erratic, the task of ruling the Seven Kingdoms fell to me, Tywin Lannister. Oh, I had served Ares for nearly <laughs> 20 years, and as a result, the realm had prospered. The royal coffers were full, the land was at peace. But Ares grew increasingly hostile, jealous of the success many credited to me. My power <laughs> and influence unnerved him. The captain of my personal guard, Sir Ellen Payne, was once overheard making offhand comments regarding who was the true ruler of Westeros. Oh, jeez. When the king was given this information, he had Ellen Payne's tongue ripped out with hot pincers. That's who killed Ned, Ellen Payne. to unite the houses of Lannister and Targaryen through marriage. My daughter Cersei would marry Aerys' eldest son, Prince Rhaegar. Such what? a union made perfect sense for all parties. However, Ares' senses had begun to leave him quite some time earlier. Instead of uniting the royal family with its most loyal and powerful ally, Ares chose instead to insult my family, indicating that such a match was beneath Rhaegar. Instead, he chose Elia Martell of Dorne to be Rhaegar's wife. So she got rejected, Cersei. Salt mm -hmm. in my wounds, Ares appointed Jaime, my son, to the King's Guard. Oh, wow. The King's Guard may be an honor for lesser families than ours, but it is a lifetime appointment that forces him to renounce all family holdings. Dang. This so sorry. So basically, different. by him taking Jamie as the hand of the king, he was basically like, not only screw you, dude, I'm going to double screw you by taking such a valuable asset. Like they could have married Jamie off mm. for really powerful political purposes. Right. Oh, baby, or he this show, have, or he boy. had a son. As we go forward, I won't sit here and beat, beat, a, beat a dead horse or nothing, man. But geez, like this show is so like well put together. Mm -hmm. Like almost like anything I've ever seen. Like unlike anything I've ever seen. This is crazy. I'm getting excited about it, guys. In naming an heir to Casterly Rock. But Ares knew all that. I had grown tired of the king's constant provocation. Thus, I resigned my post as Ares' hand and returned to Casterly Rock with my considerable forces. When Robert Baratheon rebelled against the throne, Ares grew fearful that I would join with Robert's forces and rise against him. He thought himself clever and kept Jamie very close, as if warning me. Yeah, he don't try nothing. deeper and deeper into delusion, paranoia, <coughs> and violence. I've heard it said he became obsessed with wildfire, a substance which, once lit, cannot be extinguished. Convinced he had enemies all around him, he wouldn't allow blades in his presence, save for those of his king's guard. Alas, that proved to be his undoing. Oh, trying to get at Tywin Lannister one last time was his undoing. If so Tywin so Lannister petty. was kind of the brains behind the kingdom prospering, and he didn't really get credit. Right, but it goes up. <coughs> it begs the question: like, what does prospering mean? Right, because it sounds like they were like kind of struggling. And like now... a prospering means everyone has to shut up while they live in peace. And, you know, and from their perspective, everything's going great. But it appeared to be a time of like chaos and right. not chaos, but like fear. You know, they ruled with fear. So right. it wasn't so good for the people. But in terms of the X's and O's of, you know, are the numbers good? It was probably a very good time, mm. you know, because it was a, you know, apparently sitting on the throne can cut you. Jeez. I mean, it makes sense. It's made out of swords. Yeah, he was but, called King Scabs. <laughs> but wouldn't you like Ew. dole it down or something or put a cushion on it? Uh, it just seems a little wild to me, right? I but I guess know. that's why we're soft these days. We got lazy boys. Yeah, his undoing was basically by trying to get Jamie close to him. That ended up being the thing that killed him. You know, like, why put someone so close to you who's you're taunting their family? The Targaryen dynasty united the Seven Kingdoms and lasted nearly three centuries. It was a dynasty forged in fire, sealed in blood and destroyed by rebellion. The Targaryens are blood of the dragon, descended from the nobility of ancient Valyria, a once mighty empire in the east. 
When the cataclysmic doom laid waste of Valyria and its people, the Targaryens survived, having settled on the island fortress of Dragonstone years before. They remained there for a century, until the rise of Aegon the Conqueror. Aegon the Conqueror, so... Instead of Aegon. attempting to reclaim the eastern lands of his ancestors, Aegon sailed west for the Seven Kingdoms. I thought that's what it was, they just spoke wrong. And Rhaenys at his side. <laughs> I thought I was wrong. To keep the bloodlines pure, Aegon continued the custom of his Valyrian ancestors and took both of his sisters to wife. Together, <laughs> so gross, they came ashore on the eastern coast of Westeros. Their blazon, a dragon with three heads, representing Aegon and his sister wives. Their words, fire and blood. While their host was small in comparison to the armies of Westeros that awaited them, they had dragons. Aegon and his sisters had a secret weapon. The last of the dragons. That's right. Yeah. He conquered every kingdom save Dawn, which eventually bowed to Targaryen rule a century later. He had the swords of his enemies melted down by the fiery breath of his dragon, Beleriand the Black Dread, and forged into the Iron Throne. The capital city of King's Landing was built on the eastern coast, where Aegon and his sisters first came ashore. And Aegon ordered the construction of a royal castle on its highest hill, the Red Keep. For 300 years, the Targaryen dynasty stayed strong in the face of rebellion, civil war, and plague. But the line of dragon kings was broken when my father, Ares Targaryen, the second of his name, was overthrown Murdered. in rebellion. By Jamie. My father was betrayed and slaughtered by Sir Jamie Lannister, a member of his own King's Guard. His son and heir, my brother Rhaegar, perished on the field of battle at the hands of Robert Baratheon, who claimed the Iron Throne for himself. And so today, the only surviving members of the storied Targaryen dynasty are myself, Prince Viserys, rightful King of the Andals and ruler of the Seven Kingdoms, and my sister, Daenerys. We were spirited away to the free cities of the East by loyalists. Here we have lived in exile ever since. That's where it started. Of a day when we will cross the narrow sea. So she really is the last Targaryen, huh? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Well, and Master Eamon, but he doesn't claim a house because he's a meister. Robert's Rebellion. I wonder if House of Dragons takes place when Aegon rebellion. the Conqueror was there. Maybe. The crimes yeah, of probably. House Targaryen were too heinous to go unanswered. The noble houses of Baratheon, Stark, and Arryn united to oppose and overthrow the line of the cursed Dragon Kings. While Ned Stark and Arryn secured an alliance with the Tullys of Riverrun, I called the banners of Storm's End and rode out in force against the Mad King and his minions. Gods, those were some battles. <laughs> Our first victory occurred at Summerhall, where I faced off against an army of dragon loyalists and won three battles in a single day. Three dragon loyalists. <laughs> Seven hells, that was a glorious day. We tried to take Ashford Castle in the Reach, but the Tyrrells beat us back. We had to regroup. My army was pursued north by Eris's army and took refuge in the Stony Sept in the Riverlands. When the Targaryen army entered the town, the Sept bells tolled, a signal to the townspeople of the battle that was to come. As the Targaryens searched from house to house for me, the combined forces of Ned Stark and the Tullys swept into the city. Gods, what a day that was. <laughs> I love his... It's now known when he's as talking. the Battle of the Bells. <clears throat> we overwhelmed the Mad King's forces and sent them scampering back to King's Landing. Eris's son, Rhaegar, who started the whole damn thing, finally <laughs> emerged from hiding in the south and assembled his own army to face us. As for the Mad King, he must have been pissing himself. The battle that would decide the fate of the Seven Kingdoms occurred at the crossing of the Green Fork of the Trident River. That's where they had passed. Rhaegar just commanded recently. the royal host, which was some 40,000 strong. My forces were outnumbered by nearly 5,000 men. But that didn't matter. They were fresh, 
But we were battle-hardened and had justice on our side. As the battle raged around us, I faced off with Rhaegar, the stag and the dragon right there in the ford of the river. I fought with the fury of ten men, raining blow after blow upon that vile <laughs> prince before burying my warhammer in his chest. I hit him so hard the rubies on his armor broke free, flinging them into the stream. They call it the Ruby Ford now. With Dang. that scum Rhaegar dead and the royal army shattered, our next move was to make for King's Landing. But I'd sustained a few wounds in the battle and was unable to ride. I sent Ned Stark to the capital to face the Mad King and make him pay for his crimes. What? He sent Ned? So we're about to hear it from Viserys' side. The Targaryens, blood of the dragon, and the last of old Valyria, were loved by their subjects and admired far and wide as the greatest dynasty in the history of the Western world. But the peace and prosperity of nearly three centuries of Targaryen rule was shattered by the usurper, Robert Baratheon, and his band of traitors. House Baratheon owed its very existence to the Targaryens. Was it not Aegon the Dragon himself who elevated the bastard Oris Baratheon in the War of Conquest? And what of the Starks, the Lannisters, <laughs> the Aerons of the Vale? All had been spared and allowed to keep their lands when Aegon could easily have wiped them out. Centuries later, the Usurper and his lackeys repaid Aegon's benevolence with treachery. There are some who dare to claim Robert and his allies had reason to rebel. They say the Crown Prince stole the usurper's lady love. They say my father, King Ares, murdered Rickard Stark and his son without just cause. Yeah, Chris Whether these what, charges though? are true or not, it doesn't matter. The dragon answers to no one. Oh, tyrants. Ares' good name has been besmirched in the years since the rebellion. He's been called a dangerous madman. A monster. A tyrant that brought his tragic end upon himself. Lies! <laughs> My father was a victim of weaklings in his council. Lackwits who failed him in his hour of need and let the rebellion spin out of control. But it was not enough. The royal army was crushed at the Battle of the Trident. It was there the valiant Rhaegar met Robert in single combat, but the gods betrayed him. <laughs> Excuses, bro. His hand. <laughs> As the field of fire had marked the end of the Andal centuries before, the Battle of the Trident seemed to herald the end of the Dragon Kings. When word reached the capital of my brother Rhaegar's death, my father Ares moved to protect me. As I was the survivor. Can I just say something? Yeah. Babe, are you sure that we want to root for Daenerys? Because she comes from a crazy family, bro. Yeah, but you know why? From the pure blood, blah, blah, pure blood, blah, 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 pure blood lines. I mean, I ain't trying to be mean, but I've seen her staring off in the distance a few times. Yeah, but it's, they're saying it makes them a little cuckoo because they'd be reproducing that ancestral jump. Mm. I don't know, bro. That's just, it just every time I hear them talk, they just stink. I just feel like they just don't smell good because they're nasty. They just do too much of that. Sister love, yeah. Ooh. He sent me to the island fortress of Dragonstone, along with my mother, Queen Rayla, who was great with child. But as my father, my king, Ares Targaryen, prepared to defend his throne to the bitter end, little did he know of the horrors and betrayals that awaited him and our family. Yes, Robert Baratheon again. Ours is the fury. These are the words of the Black Stag of Baratheon. A battle cry echoed throughout the land in rebellion when I, Robert Baratheon, the first of his name, seized the Iron Throne from the Mad King, Eris Targaryen, ending a dynasty nearly 300 years old. House Baratheon was born in the Wars of Conquest when Aegon the Dragon invaded Westeros. Aegon sent his commander, Oris Baratheon, to take Storm's End. Argilac the Arrogant, the last of the Storm Kings, foolishly left the safety of his stronghold and met the Baratheon warlord <coughs> in open battle. Argilac was soundly defeated, and Oris took his lands, his holdings, 
and his daughter. Oris was said to be a half-brother to Aegon Targaryen. If this were true, a little blood of the dragon mingled with that of the stag in those days. The seat of House Baratheon is Storm's End, a legendary keep raised in the Age of Heroes. It overlooks Shipbreaker's Bay, where legend has it that Durin, the first Storm King, raised the keep with the aid of Bran the Builder of House Stark, forging a centuries-long connection with the Stormlands and the North. After Aegon's conquest of the Seven Kingdoms, the Baratheons remained loyal enough to the Crown while Targaryen kings came and went. But loyalty has its limits. Absolutely. When Rhaegar Targaryen, Aerys's vile son and heir, abducted Lyanna Stark, my betrothed, my beloved, no. it was time to act. We raised our banners, Baratheon, Stark, Jon Arryn and the Tullys, united in rebellion against Rhaegar and his father, the Mad King. We were victorious and took the Iron Throne. That bit of dragon blood in my veins came in well, as it made me a distant relation to the Targaryen dynasty blood of my long-lost ancestor, Oris. <laughs> the truth of it is, I took it. I sit on the Iron Throne. Right, so he, it wasn't, he wasn't the rightful heir. <laughs> from the Red Keep. He wasn't the rightful heir at all. <laughs> he made it seem like he's sitting on that throne doing something. He's sitting on that <laughs> throne drinking something. <laughs> Robert Baratheon's victory at the Trident was a turning point in the war for the Iron Throne. While it was clear the gods were smiling on the rebel forces, Aerys Targaryen still held the Red Keep at King's Landing. As Robert was wounded and unable to ride, it was up to Eddard Stark to make for the capital and force the Mad King to give up the throne. Lord Stark reached the city gates to find that Tywin Lannister Lord of Casterly Rock had already sacked the city in Robert's name. House Lannister had remained neutral up to this point, ignoring requests for help from both the Crown and the rebels. Now that Robert's eventual victory was assured, it seemed Lord Tywin had finally chosen a side. Lord Eddard was horrified by what he saw when he entered the city. Homes looted and burned, women raped, scores of innocent citizens killed. Disgusted, he led his force up Visenya's hill to the Red Keep. Upon entering the throne room, he found King Aerys lying in a pool of blood, dead by the hand of his own sworn king's guard, Jaime Lannister, who sat brazenly upon the throne. He was sitting on it. Demanding to know the whereabouts of Queen Rhaelar, Lord Eddard was informed the queen and her son Viserys had been spirited away to Dragonstone before the Lannisters arrived. But other members of the royal family were not as fortunate. Elia Martell of Dawn, who was the wife of Prince Rhaegar, had been raped and murdered by Sir Krigor Clegane on Lord Tywin's orders. Oh, we know him. Sir yeah. Krigor and his man had also butchered Rhaegar's young children. When Robert was well enough to reach the capital, Lord Eddard demanded the Lannisters answer for their heinous crimes. Robert refused, and sent him south to relieve the Baratheon stronghold of Storm's End, which was still under siege by forces loyal to the Crown. Wow. Whatever words passed between the two old friends are known only to them. But Lord Eddard is said to have left King's Landing in anger. Later, when Robert was crowned, he appointed John Arryn as Hand of the King. Lord Arryn's first order of business was to broker a truce with the Martells of Dawn, who were outraged by the brutal murder of Princess Elia and her children. Following the death of Lyanna Stark, who had been betrothed to Robert, houses Baratheon and Lannister were joined in marriage when the new king took Tywin Lannister's eldest daughter, Cersei, as his queen. Mm. As for Eddard Stark, he returned to his stronghold of Winterfell, forever haunted by his sister's death and the shameful way that Robert had secured his throne. Dang, that's jacked up. Mm-hmm. Let's hear his perspective. For up. our rebellion to succeed, King's Landing had to be taken forcefully. No one was foolish enough to believe that Eris was going to hand his crown over peacefully. 
The Mad King's reign needed to end. What Tywin Lannister's forces did was unfortunate, but it was necessary to secure the Iron Throne and bring peace and justice to the Seven Kingdoms. My glorious victory at the Trident left me glorious. <laughs> but I sent my personal maester to attend to Sir Barristan Selmy instead. His wounds were more severe. Even though Sir Barristan was a member oh, of yeah, Eris's Sir King's Guard and fought on the opposing side, that man's bravery and loyalty was something to behold. But this meant my wounds would take longer to heal and I couldn't ride to King's Landing myself. I sent the one man I trusted over anyone else in this world, Ed Ned Stark, in my place. Oh, he calls him Ned, because that's Had his friend, Had I been huh? able to ride, perhaps I could have reached King's Landing sooner and prevented some of the violence that occurred when the Lannisters entered the city. Still, what Lord Tywin did was for the greater good. <laughs> Even what happened to Princess Elia and her children. Babies or no, Theirs was the same cursed blood that flowed within the Mad King's veins. They were dragon spawn and couldn't be allowed to survive. What would they grow to be? Loyal subjects. <sighs> Jeez, I don't know, bro. I'm glad I don't have to be a politician in this world. Northern honor. He and I had our first major fight over the deaths of the Targaryen children. Ned called it murder. Murder. It was war. It was war. Didn't they say that earlier in the season, baby? Lord what? Stark demanded that the Lannisters be held responsible for their. Weren't they kind of having this conversation <laughs> when they were talking about what they were going to do about the Targaryen children? But yeah. he was he. I think he referred to them as the children, but they're they're grown. Basically. But no, they're but, different children now. Well, they're older. But no, it's different children now because now it was them. It was them, and then now. The one he was trying to kill now is Daenerys because he was trying to kill her before right. she had a son. But what I'm saying is like, yeah, but that's what Ned sitting there basically when. OK, so Robert's like, we have to kill the um, Targaryen. So he's saying we have to kill Daenerys. And Ned's like, who are you to quiver at like a child? Basically, like mm -hmm. first they're saying she's just a little girl, basically, is what he's saying. Yeah. And basically, Ned's passionate about it because he's seen Robert make this mistake before. Yeah. So and that's maybe, why he, that answer was so strong for him. And maybe a part of why Robert didn't sit on the throne with like grace and dignity and stuff is because he knows in order what he basically he knows what he did to conquer that throne. Mm -hmm. And so he just sits on it. But he's, it's almost like he's not proud of it. He just drinks it away because he knows the atrocities that he had to commit to sit on that throne. Right, he had to do so much to get there. Right, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crimes. Was it a crime to put an end to a family of lunatics born of incest? Oh, you hear him justifying? I still mm -hmm. won't blame Tywin. Instead, I sent Ned Stark south to finish off the remaining Targaryen loyalists. It was only Lyanna Stark's death that reconciled us. Ned had lost his sister. I had lost my betrothed and beloved. We shared that sad bond together, Ned and I. Through it, our friendship was made strong again. As for the Mad King's Makes surviving sense. heirs, those that were able to scurry away in the face of my fury went to Dragonstone, now live right? somewhere across the narrow sea. They had best stay there. If they ever set foot in Westeros again, they will. They were in the free the cities. Justice. When they got taken away, though, they went to Dragonstone. They, that's where they took Viserys Rhaegar and Targaryen Daenerys. lay dead on the banks of so. the Trident. His royal army shattered and in retreat. The days of the Dragon Kings were clearly numbered. Until that moment, it would have been foolish to commit Casterly Rock to either the Crown or the Rebellion. What would our family have to gain in supporting a raving madman? Or in entering a crusade to put Robert Baratheon on the Iron Throne? Mm -hmm. But chaos benefits no one. It was time for House Lannister to do what it could to ensure a return of peace and prosperity to the land. I, Tywin Lannister, brought 10,000 Lannister troops to the gates of King's Landing in order to bring the bloodshed to a quick and decisive conclusion. King Aerys had been sending ravens for months begging for my support to end the uprising. In a way, his pleas had been answered. As I had suspected, 
Ares opened the city gates and welcomed my men. Our plan was he turned clear. on him. Crush Ares' remaining bannermen and remove the remnants of the royal family as quickly and efficiently as possible. Any alternative meant years of further war and a fragmented seven kingdoms. Our means were bloody, but the results speak for themselves. As for Ares, it is true he met his fate at the hands of my son. Ares had kept Jaime close during the rebellion, thinking himself clever in keeping my son as a hostage should I decide to pledge support to the right. rebel cause. This proved to be his greatest mistake. For when the time came, Jaime did his duty as a Lannister and drove his sword into the Mad King's back. With that, Robert Baratheon's crown was secured. The new king recognized our role in his ascension to the throne, just as he recognized how useful the might and riches of Casterly Rock would be if he wanted to keep it. There you go. To that end, I offered my daughter Cersei as his queen. Jamie's a hostage right now. But Ares That's not crazy. Had this same offer years earlier. Perhaps things would have worked out differently. Everyone in this whole universe Robert is a hostage and in a way. <laughs> mm -hmm. king and queen of the Seven Kingdoms, it was a new day. The dragon was vanquished, and the Seven Kingdoms would thereafter belong to the stag and the lion. So I'm really starting to see that, you know, when you think about our globe, if all hell breaks loose, like there are places you can go and hide, you know, like if you're that guy in this universe, I'm really starting to see that like the only thing you really have to hang on to is your family name and you just better hope they're in power because there appears to be really nowhere to go. You know, it just seems really small. So there's nowhere to go where they won't find you. And the only other option that I can think of is to maybe try to escape north. But that's like really cold and there's wildlings there. Right. So, yeah, I think from all that, I just learned that Taiwan is like more important than we think than we know. Like, like historically? Taiwan, yeah, no, Taiwan, like literally in a way he could have took like the throne and he didn't. He Jamie like, could have took he, the throne. Yeah, Jamie or Taiwan. And they just made peace and said by letting Robert and Cersei get married. Right. Like, so I'm wondering why he did that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe because Robert had a big army. Maybe. Maybe it wasn't as simple as just, oh, if I sit on it, it's mine. You know, maybe that would have cost a lot of bloodshed and a lot of treasure. And, you know, there's just a lot of politics that it's, it would be really hard to understand. I mean, you could live in that time. You could live in this reality and you could be absorbed in this and involved in this every single day. And you could still not be able to comprehend the politics that would go into all these decisions and stuff that were made. So I'm having a lot of fun with this. Yeah, me too. The Battle of the Trident may have been an important victory for the Usurper. Is that Jamie? But yeah. It was the treachery and barbarism of Tywin Lannister that sealed the fate of the Targaryen dynasty. No, it, does, it might not My be. My father, King Aerys, okay. had ever Close been a serious. friend yeah. to the Lions of the Rock. Aerys graciously brought Tywin to court, making him the youngest hand of the king in history. Oh. He gave him Crazy. power. He gave him respect. He made it possible for Tywin to restore House Lannister to glory. Ares and Tywin governed side by side for 20 prosperous years. Still, when the usurper called his banners in rebellion, Tywin Lannister ignored his king's pleas for help and stayed holed up in his stronghold of Casterly Rock. In time, my brother, Prince Rhaegar, was dead. The realm was in turmoil and the Usurper's forces were said to be riding for King's Landing. What a glorious sight it must have been when a force of 10,000 Lannister men showed up at the gate of the capital with Lord Tywin at their head, pledging support to his beleaguered king. Ares opened the gates for his old friend. Instead, Lannister and his men proceeded to plunder and destroy the city that he had called home for decades. Mm. As the capital was ravaged and its people terrorized, Jaime Lannister, son of Lord Tywin, proved every bit as treacherous. He killed my father, the king, at the foot of the Iron Throne. The Lannisters entered the Red Keep and Tywin ordered the deaths of the rest of the royal family. It is said Princess Rhaenys was found cowering under her father's bed and put to the sword. She was only a child. As for Rhaegar's widow, Elia, 
she was forced to watch as Lannister thugs dashed her baby son's head against a wall before oh being raped and murdered herself. As I was the heir to my father's throne, I had been spirited away to Dragonstone with my mother, Queen Rayla, who was with child. As a raging summer storm battered the island fortress and destroyed the Targaryen fleet as it lay at anchor, my sister Daenerys was born. My mother, the queen, died giving birth. Wow. Now, some 17 years later, the rightful king still lives in exile. But a day of reckoning is coming. <laughs> I will sail west as Aegon the Dragon did centuries before. I will take back my father's throne with blood and fire. And I will punish the treacherous dogs who sought to destroy my family. And the people shall rejoice. That's crazy, bro. From his perspective, you know. In the snow-capped mountains of the moon, standing high above the rich lands of the Vale, stands the Eyrie. A storied and impregnable fortress said to have been built by the legendary mountain kings in the Age of Heroes. It is the stronghold of House Aaron, one of the oldest noble families in Westeros. Their sigil, a soaring falcon over a crescent moon. Their words, as high as honor. The Aarons are direct descendants of the Andal invaders who sailed across the narrow sea and came ashore <coughs> at the Fingers. According to legend, Sir Artis Aaron, known as the Winged Knight, soared through the sky atop a giant falcon, landing on the peak of the highest mountain where he defeated the Griffin King in battle. It was the Andal's first great victory over the First Men, and Sir Artis was duly rewarded. He was declared King of the Mountain and the Vale and the region was renamed the Vale of Erin. Thousands of years later, Aegon the Conqueror arrived in Westeros. House Erin bent the knee to Aegon and his dragons, and were allowed to maintain the control of the region as Lords Paramount of the Vale and Wardens of the East. Over the centuries, House Erin remained loyal to the Targaryen dynasty until Lord John Erin joined with houses Baratheon and Stark in rebellion against Mad King Aerys. Upon winning the Iron Throne, Robert named Lord John Hand of the King, a position he held until his mysterious death. Right. Poison. On the far western coast of the continent, High atop a rocky promontory overlooking the Sunset Sea sits Casterly Rock, ancestral seat of House Lannister. Below it lies Lannisport, one of the great cities of Westeros, a center for trade, culture, and the great Lannister fleet. There are a number of gold and silver mines in the Westerlands, making it the richest region in all of Westeros. Oh, that's why. One of the most productive mines lies beneath Casterly Rock itself, making House Lannister the wealthiest of all the noble houses. So lucky, bro. This allows House Lannister to finance many endeavors of other noble houses. <laughs> yeah. Even the king himself has sought credit from Casterly Rock from time to time. Right. <laughs> we Lannisters claim our descent from the Andal invaders, and through the female bloodline, Lan the Clever. According to the legend, Lan, using only his wits, won Casterly Rock from the noble House of Casterly during the Age of Heroes. The Lannisters reigned as Kings of the Rock for thousands of years and worked to make it the envy of the rest of the Seven Kingdoms. Our time as kings ended, however, when Aegon Targaryen, otherwise known as Aegon the Conqueror, arrived in Westeros with his army. The last King of the Rock, King Lorin Lannister, joined forces with King Mern Gardner, the King of the Reach. Together, with 60,000 men, they met the Targaryen host in open That's battle. That's when they got torched. That's when they got torched History up. History tells right. us that Aegon unleashed all three of his dragons, slaughtering 4,000 men at what came to be known as the Field of Fire. Yeah. 
King Mern himself was burned, burned alive that day, and House Gardner turned to ash with him. Seeing both the threat and opportunity the Targaryens represented, Lorin wisely surrendered and aided Aegon in his further conquest of Westeros. The Lannisters were thus appointed Lords Paramount of the Westerlands and Wardens of the West, titles we hold to this day. Let us be West. clear, though. It is neither luck nor royal favor that makes our house prosperous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there have been times in our history where some have thought us weak, lazy, or opulent. Right. My father, Titus Lannister, nearly bankrupted our house with his poor investments and allowed himself to be mocked openly at court. When our vassal, the reigns of Castamere, dared to rise up against the Lannisters, they learned how dangerous it can be to taunt a lion. I, Tywin Lannister, led the assault on Castamere to put down this rebellion. I made an example of them to anyone who doubts our might. They even made a quaint song about the fates of the reigns of Castamere. So dang, his dad was a punk in a way. No <laughs> that's crazy. To hear it. Maybe that's why it's so hard. Today, the Golden Lion of Lannister is rightly admired and feared throughout the Seven Kingdoms. Our words are, hear me roar. But there are other words that should be remembered when they always pay their debts. Lannister always pays his debt, right? <laughs> You're a, a smart man. <laughs> But it's really hear me roar. Starks of Winterfell traced their descent to the first men in the Age of Heroes. The family's founder was Brandon the Builder, who, in the aftermath of the Long Night, helped establish the Night's Watch. Legend has it he enlisted the aid of giants and the powerful magic of the Children of the Forest to raise the that Lord, wall, which has protected the realm for generations. He went on to build the ancestral seat of Winterfell and reigned as the first king in the north. The Starks reigned as kings for thousands of years, even withstanding the invasion of the Andals. As the southern kingdoms fell and the children of the forest were driven away, the north stood strong, maintaining its religious customs and its way of life. Eventually, the reign of the kings of winter came to an end with the coming of Aegon the Conqueror. After Aegon and his dragons destroyed the combined armies of the Reach and the Rock at the Field of Fire, King Torrin Stark bent the knee and swore fealty to the Targaryen dynasty in order to spare the destruction of Winterfell and his people. He was forever after known as the King Who Knelt. Mm. As a reward for his submission, I hate that. Aegon named Torrin Lord of Winterfell and Warden of the North. The Starks take great pride in their history and traditions. Can I pause? Yeah. Few so guys, just one thing that popped in my mind. So I see a parallel. The King Who Knelt and in a way, Eddard Stark is sort of like the warden who confessed, basically. Kinda. And so they both like lost their honor. They lost their honor to save people they loved. Yeah. Right. Like that's what he did too. In a way. Torin. You see that parallel? Yeah. Two <laughs> noble houses that still keeps the old gods. A sacred weirwood tree looms large in Winterfell's godswood. Its ancestral sword, ice, was forged in ancient Valeria has been passed down through the generations. Wasn't that Ned Sword? Paul Stark right. remains steadfast in its support of the Night's Watch, even as the once illustrious order has fallen on hard times. Much like their sigil, the Grey Direwolf, how stark is the stuff of legend in the North and throughout the Seven Kingdoms. And their family words, winter, winter is coming. coming. That's so their thing. a reminder of their beginnings in the wake of the Long Night and a grim portent of things to come. That's our sigil. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. It's oh, just like a. It. Oh, pause this. We can't watch this. Chill, chill. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us. Thank you guys so much for all the support we've gotten on this series. Uh, it's nuts. I mean, yeah. if we're just going to be 100% honest with you guys, our Patreon has like tripled just because we were watching Game of Thrones and I, like, we're just here for it. Like, That's we're why not we have to do it right. We got to watch this. So we got to know about it. Everyone keeps saying like Game of Thrones is such a great strategy to blow up your channel, blah, blah, blah. I can honestly say we didn't start watching this because it was a strategy to blow up our channel. It's just really popular. It's we what, it what we voted, then they voted for it. Yeah, they just yeah. voted for it in a poll. And so. it was like five people at the time voted for it. 
for it. So it was like that's how it won our poll. Like right. imagine now. Right. Yeah. yeah. If we yeah we'd have like so many more votes. So anyways, man, thank you guys so much for the support. I just wanted to say that one more time. Okay, YouTube. So that was the histories and lore. Uh, we said pretty much everything that there is to say for the most part while we were reacting to this. And honestly, babe, I feel like now that we've watched that, I can say that I feel like I'm sort of in the Game of Thrones sphere now. Before I was just like a rookie to it. Now I sort of feel like I have a really good understanding of like the first season, what we just watched. Because it goes so deep. It goes so deep. It's way so deeper well than you would put think. Together. Yes. What did you think about that? I think all those little references that we've seen throughout the season one, of course, there's so many little references and this is like bringing it to life, which is like exactly what you would want. Like right. Exactly what you would want to see. So I'm, I really appreciated that. We, I said it even in the video, like even all the references of, but we fought together in the so and so. You know, I can't say it right off the top of my head, but when we go back the and read references, of the trident. it'll yeah. mean so much more. Like, yeah, because you know, we know the Battle of the Trident now. Like, we've heard that reference a lot. Now we know that's where Robert was just a straight G. Robert was up here just, and and all we knew, chest Robert so hard, yeah, diamonds were falling and in the making river. it our Ruby River or whatever it was right. called, Ruby, C whatever. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I appreciated about this the most? What? It took this really big, vast world where I was looking at this world, guys, and I was seeing the the small amount of like family and sigils and stuff mm. but i was i was basically i was taking that and i was projecting so i was projecting that the backstory and all this was so much bigger and more like grand than it was which you know isn't a bad thing but what i'm trying to say is it's actually a lot more it's a lot simpler to understand than i thought it would be mm -hmm. and so in a way the story isn't that complex they actually took it all the way to the beginning they broke it down all the way to the first men and they broke it down from all perspectives of the houses which was right. great yeah i, like, I just, like that a lot they made it so simple to really mm -hmm. understand the politics of what's going on in this world and even looking at the map just understanding how small of a sliver of westeros is you know mm -hmm. and it really explains why it's so important that these houses lean on each other it's why there's such an emphasis on loyalty and all that so I'm just glad we watched and it. And you kind of see the Lannisters are at the root of it all. Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Like they they have been. You know, like in real life, you know, they say, oh, civilization started 8,000 years ago, whatever the case may be. Uh, and then, you know, there's like more of like the fringe area where you can say, well, no, actually there was a cataclysm 13,500 years ago. And maybe there was civilizations before. And, you know, we can have those debates and stuff. But in this world, it seems like civilization sort of started and then it just kind of like ramped up, dude. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like from the beginning, it seems like there wasn't really much of like an introductory period it was the first men you know there was the children of the forest mm -hmm. and then the first men and then the endos come to they met each other and discovered war it seems like and mm -hmm. nothing's really changed so i guess in this timeline we're sort of at the beginning but you know what i would love to see what? absolutely love to see i would really like to see a series based on the age of heroes I think that's what it's supposed to be, right? The House of Dragons, because it said through. I think House of Dragons. I takes thought that place happened like right before years. Robert's Rebellion. I thought the Age, the of, Age Heroes of Heroes was way before that. Yeah, like, that was ancient times. Well, no, Aegon's the one who allowed the Age of Heroes. All those people, he's the one that allowed them to have all that land. Okay. It was Aegon. So Aegon was three hundred years back. I don't know if that's the House of Dragons, but if it is, that is so cool. Absolutely. But but I think for me the coolest part about all this is just like I don't know. All lore is interesting to me. I I, I took like four pages. Pages and notes of how interesting the jump. You want to show the notes real quick before we get off? We're gonna be posting these on Patreon. If you just if you guys are interested, some of you guys appreciate it. So she she went basically from here. It's hard to flip. She's got here, here, here. Babe, you went in. Here, 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 here. So with that being said. Uh, Mrs. October definitely did her best to pay attention and we do have the notes which <laughs> these are really nice because these are really good to be able to reference when we're watching these episodes in the future guys just so you know if you ever do see us looking down we do have our notes so if you ever see us flip just in case we want to like remember a name or catch a reference point. like I have seen a couple that have a really fancy smancy board and like we just kind of like I, I just can take notes and I can edit and that's about a, the best I can do you guys yeah but I really do like their board it's really cool this lore is incredible I didn't realize this show was so well thought out and complex as it is I see why so many of you guys are really passionate about the writing and basically the intellect that this show has to offer so and as you should be yeah as you guys definitely should be thank you guys so much for hanging out with us it has been the Octobers as y'all already know like subscribe hit up on patreon if you want even more content uh we have everything over there unedited uncut and completely synced up got anything else you want to add nope it's been a blast all right guys we'll see y'all on season two let's go